Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake. Man, I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on did he, did he do it, and the entire federal investigation and lawsuit going on right now. Tonight at 11, Sean Combs' luxury mansions across the country raided by Homeland Security agents and two of his kids put in handcuffs. Federal Homeland Security investigations agents. Heavily armed and armored tactical teams, guns drawn, clearing room to room. A similar scene playing out in Diddy's homes more than 2,000 miles away on Miami's Star Island. Did he do it? Has got to be the number one question of 2024 as the hardest lawsuit in hip hop has the internet in shambles. Fed raids, private jets, and the wildest parties have hip-hop legend Diddy in the hot seat as the feds investigate, 50 instigates, and the rest of us wait to see, did he do it? Now y'all are in for an exciting ride because this case starts off with its own trigger warning, something I've never seen in my five years of covering legal work. But obviously we're gonna abide by YouTube guidelines, and I'll let y'all use your adult imagination to fill in the blanks. Rodney Jones, who's more commonly known as Lil Rod, no diddy, is an award-winning Grammy nominee producer, artist, and instrumentalist from Chicago. He's also apparently Diddy's worst fucking nightmare as he's airing everything out. According to his GoFundMe, Rod worked one year straight on Diddy's Love album and apparently got fucked over on money, publishing shares, and royalties for the project. With a goal of raising $50,000, Rod claims taking Diddy to trial could cost him up to 300000 and every donation counts. Rod would claim for the last six months, him and his team try to resolve these issues with Diddy, but Diddy's tactics were to stall communications, dry out his money, and leave Rod in a desperate state without any ground to hold up against the music mogul. So Rod said fuck it. The 105-page amended lawsuit would state Rod lived with Diddy for months, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing family events. He lived at Diddy's $40 million Los Angeles estate and $35 million Miami mansion. He'd also spend several weeks on a yacht rented by Diddy in the US Virgin Islands. While living a superstar lifestyle doesn't sound so bad, Lil Rod would claim he witnessed experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer. Diddy required Rod to record him constantly, and on several occasions took Rod's phone to record himself. As a result, Rod has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Diddy, his staff, and guests engaging in serious illegal activity. And with this lawsuit, he's exposing it all. On September 12th, 2022, there was an argument within a Los Angeles recording studio between Diddy, his son Justin, and a man named G, who was a friend of Justin. The argument moved from the studio and into a bathroom close to where Lil Rod was sitting. Rod was only two feet away when multiple gunshots rang out, causing Rod to fear for his life, believing he'd be shot next. When the bathroom door opened, Diddy and Justin walked out, while G laid on the floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out. A crowd was now standing around G, but nobody was helping him. So Rod ran over and began applying pressure while asking the crowd to call an ambulance. Rod would lift G to the ambulance as Diddy and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. Diddy would later give strict instructions to inform police he had nothing to do with the shooting and forced Rod to lie to police by telling them G was shot outside the studio in a drive-by. A news report would be included in the lawsuit stating one person was shot outside of a Hollywood recording studio around 3 a.m. It would also state the man was shot after stepping outside the studio. Lil Rod would claim to have several corroborating witnesses he spoke with anonymously because they fear retaliation from Diddy but they've allegedly agreed to speak on what they saw if subpoenaed to court. Meaning if the courts order them to come in, they'll answer the toughest question, did he do it? Screenshots of the aftermath would be included in the paperwork, along with a screenshot of Diddy in the studio, 
And Rod would claim because Diddy failed to provide security for himself and other workers within the studio, he is now severely traumatized. Rod would claim he now suffers from PTSD, severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia. But it wouldn't stop there. Lil Rod would also attempt to unravel the cover-up. An Instagram message would come from the actual recording studio stating the shooting happened a half block away, was the result of a robbery, and G returned to the studio after being shot. TMZ would report the story told the cops that night was the victim was robbed at gunpoint by two individuals outside, one of which who shot the victim. The lawsuit would highlight how strenuously secure the studio was, such as having to be buzzed in, identifying yourself to reception, being on a visitor's list, etc. Just to get to the bathroom G was found bleeding in, you'd have to pass reception, walk down a long hallway past three recording studios, turn left, pass a lounge, and finally reach the bathroom. Being shot and left unable to walk, it sounds highly unlikely G would make it a half block back to the studio and all the way to the bathroom just to be carried out to an ambulance. So why hasn't anyone else spoke out? Well apparently days before the shooting, Diddy sent a non-disclosure agreement to everyone that would be present within the studio. Lil Ra would allege they're in fear of being sued and in small writing on the lawsuit, it would state they were unaware an NDA is voided when it comes to reporting crimes. Lil Rod didn't sign the NDA anyways, and he's speaking out on a whole lot more. While living with Diddy, Lil Rod would claim to be the victim of constant, unsolicited, and unauthorized groping and touching of his. Rod was also forced by Diddy to work in his bathroom while Diddy walked around in his birthday suit and showered. As a straight Christian man, Rod was uncomfortable with Diddy's advances and expressed his discomfort to Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Corum. She'd reply with, you know, Sean will be Sean. She'd also attempt to downplay what happened as horseplay and as Diddy's way of showing he likes you. Rod believes Diddy was trying to groom him into a relationship and into doing other things. Diddy knew Rod idolized Stevie J, so Diddy showed a video of who he claims was Stevie J doing the nasty with the white man. Rod believes Diddy showed him this because if Stevie J can do it, they can do it, maybe even together. He'd quote Diddy as saying, this is normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. Rod would also claim Diddy told him he did the nasty with the rapper and R&B singer. Both of their names would be redacted from the paperwork, but at the bottom of the page, it would state the rappers from Philly and dated Nicki Minaj. The R&B singer performed at the Super Bowl. This would damn near cause a social media shutdown as the internet filled in the blanks. Lil Rod was alleging that Diddy was claiming to have fucked Meek Mill and Usher. Diddy would then promise Rod he win a Grammy for producer of the year if he got down with the get down. Fast forward to Thanksgiving of 2022, Rod was in Diddy's Miami mansion along with young Miami and her female cousin. Diddy was intoxicated to say the least and offering cocaine, but Rod rejected it as he walked into the bathroom. While using the bathroom, young Miami's cousin bursted in, dropping to her knees. Rod claimed he had to push her off him to leave the bathroom, but she just followed, undressing along the way as she attempted to straddle him in front of Diddy and staff. Rod thinks Diddy sent her to freakily assault him and provided pictures of her in the mansion. Rod would also name Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy, who were all paid to play on a monthly basis. 50 Cent would respond to the news about his baby mother on Instagram. Apparently this wasn't the first time Diddy sent the hit and Diddy was big on hiring girls to do what he asked. Rod would claim he'd be drugged, waking up next to Diddy and two girls Diddy paid to play. On another occasion, Diddy tried to get him to do coke, but would end up waiting a little later to do coke with young Miami. Diddy would send Rod to Miami's famous strip club Booby Trap to recruit girls while wearing a bad boy baseball hat. Diddy would then force him to have fun with the same girls. To maintain control over Rod, Diddy would promise him $250,000 for any instruments he wanted, ownership of a $20 million Miami home, and access to record label executives. But at times, 
Diddy would switch his approach, threatening Rod with violence, and at one point saying he'd eat Rod's face and kill his mother. On July 2nd, 2023, Diddy had a listening party at his California home. According to Rod, there was an R&B artist, Diddy's son Justin, and underage girls. Diddy had required Rod to recruit women he could pay to play with, and as several women came to the house, there were at least five girls under the age of 16 in the crowd. Diddy forced everyone to drink liquor laced with ecstasy, and when Rod attempted to leave, Diddy took his car keys, forcing him to stay. After consuming four laced shots of liquor, Rod fell asleep, waking up naked with a female next to him. So while Diddy allegedly threw himself and multiple women at Rod, Diddy would also allegedly try to hook up Rod with a famous actor. Rod would be introduced to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on a yacht. Video evidence would show Cuba began touching, groping, and fondling Rod's legs, inner thighs, shoulders, and the small of his back. Rod would claim he was extremely uncomfortable, but in a screenshot from the video, Rod appears to be smiling through it before allegedly pushing him away. Once again, Rod was fucking up the vibe, so Diddy had him sit down while showing an arsenal of guns and bragging about the shootings he got away with. This would be when Diddy allegedly said he was responsible for the shooting in a New York nightclub with the rapper Shine. It was 2.55 a.m. on December 27th, 1999. Shots rang out at Club New York in Manhattan, and three people were shot, while Diddy, J-Lo, and Shine were arrested after a gun was found in their car. Shine would end up being the only one charged and sentenced to 10 years in prison. It's been said Shine made a deal with the devil, taking the charge for Diddy, and Rod is now saying Jenny from the block is the one who carried the gun into the club and passed it to Diddy before he opened fire. Cassie would also claim in her lawsuit Diddy had her carrying guns in her purse just to make her feel uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is. Rod was terrified, felt he couldn't tell Diddy no, and Diddy apparently made it clear his security Fahim Muhammad had the power to make people and problems disappear. According to Rod, Diddy instructs his staff to always contact Muhammad if the police in Miami or California pull them over. It was also Muhammad who spoke with LAPD, spinning the story to cover up the recording studio shooting. The lawsuit would state Christina is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs' Jeffrey Epstein. Rod would witness Christina openly ordering staff to keep Diddy high off gummies and pills. She'd require all employees, from the butler to the chef to the housekeepers to walk around with a black Prada bag or fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, and Tusi. She wanted Diddy's drug of choice available at all times whenever he asked for it. Now Tusi is pink cocaine mixed with ecstasy, and it's more popular in places like Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Colombia. With Miami being in close proximity to the islands, Tusi would find its way to Diddy's mansion. And according to Rod, Christina distributed the drug to Diddy's celebrity friends and women who came to party. This brings us to former basketball player Brendan Paul. Brendan would work as Diddy's drug mule, acquiring and distributing drugs and guns alongside another associate named Frankie Santella. In one incident, Brendan would forget to bring Tusi for Diddy, so Young Miami brought it on a private jet from Miami. Brendan would go viral after being arrested with cocaine during the federal raid of Diddy's homes. He's since bonded out of jail, but many are wondering now that he's facing prison and a federal investigation, if he'll cooperate against Diddy. Rod would allege while living with Diddy, he discovered Diddy had secret cameras in every room of his house. It's believed Diddy has recordings of several celebrities, artists, music label executives, and athletes engaging in illegal activities at Diddy's parties. As with the case of Stevie J, Diddy has compromising footage of every person who's attended his freak off parties. And because of this treasure trove of evidence, Diddy believes he's above the law and untouchable. Rod's lawsuit would go as far as laying out its own RICO allegations against Diddy, accusing him of being the enterprise while his workers trafficked women, minors, and drugs. 
Spike and Licka recording with hidden cameras and having an employed staff running the operation, the allegations would only seem worse as the feds have not only raided his homes and seized his security cameras, they're now issuing subpoenas to associates and employees of Diddy, along with all flight logs from his private jet. Rod would also claim to witness Diddy supplying known gang members with guns out of his own closet, but was purposely vague in describing them in the lawsuit out of fear. While much of this lawsuit may sound believable, it's important to remember these are all accusations coming from Rod, who had no accusations until being fucked over financially. There is no actual proof Meek Mill or Usher engaged in anything with Diddy. A male adult entertainer has come forward claiming it was him in the video and not Stevie J. While minors are alleged to have been at the party by Rod, it's unclear how Rod was the only one who knew the girls were under the exact age of 16, as stated. And while Rod accused Diddy of forcing him to partake in parties, Rod would consistently reap the benefits of living in multi-million dollar homes, traveling on lavish trips, and waking up with naked women. With the feds fully investigating, whatever's been kept in Diddy's darkness will soon be coming to the light, along with the answer to the question, did he do it? Now if this lawsuit turns into a Rico, this is gonna be the freakiest Rico, they're gonna call this shit a Frico. My personal opinion, there was probably some wild shit going on. But if you've ever been to Miami, you know there's a lot of women in Miami that's selling it. As far as trafficking goes, because you know, the whole pimp game, they changed it up. First you were getting charged as a pimp, now you're getting charged with human trafficking. They changed the game, so a lot of what their religion is, Diddy just paid females to show up and do things for his guests. It's not like Diddy was flying in females from different countries and taking girls from Mexico and hyping it up into a whole nother element. As far as I know, I mean, from what I'm reading, all it is is they were going to booby trap, getting dances to come over and get freaky at the party. Now, you're not supposed to spike anybody's drinks, but if adults are there and they want to, whatever they want to do, they're adults. That's on them. As far as trafficking drugs, no, you cannot take pink cocaine from Miami and fly it to LA. But then again, I'm pretty sure an amount would come into play when it comes to trafficking. As far as having ammo and other people, because he's got secret recordings, in the state of Florida, it is a felony alone to record someone without their permission, without their knowledge of being recorded. So if he has all that, and the feds find all that coming from his Miami home, that in itself is a charge against him. Now keep in mind, all of these things are just accusations by Rod. When it comes to Meek Mill, when it comes to Usher, Stevie J, everything is just an accusation. It's the equivalent of me robbing someone, right? Let's say I make them piss themselves. They're super scared, whatever, they know I did it. When they go to the police, they could say I pissed myself. They could say whatever they want. They could make something completely up. The police are gonna write it down and when you go look in the paperwork, that's what it's gonna say, that he said this. That doesn't mean that's what actually happened, but that's what he's alleging. So Rod is alleging these things and that does not mean these things happen. So for Meek and everyone else that's been catching shit about this, I'm sure they have the understanding. I highly doubt that they were doing these crazy things. I don't know, I might have a different opinion because I feel like right is right, wrong is wrong. And if you were with all the bullshit up until you got fucked over on money, it's like you were partaking in it. But once you get fucked over, now I was forced and I was this and I was that. But that's just my opinion, that might not be true. Maybe whatever he's saying actually happened. And I guarantee fucking to you, the feds are gonna find out. But let me know y'all's thoughts and comments in the comments section. Would you go to a Diddy party? Do you think Diddy did it? Did he do it? It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.